30 seconds. You good? Hmm? Oh, we're not ready yet. We're on the air? Mm -hmm. 20 seconds. You can. Hey, we are on. Okay. Let's start anyway. All right, good evening. It's 6 p.m. July 13th. I'd like to open the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for this evening. First, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being televised live on local Mashpee TV. So if we could all rise, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of Allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Before we get started, one announcement. At the end of this meeting tonight, we're going to reorganize the board for the upcoming calendar year. Sitting on tonight's first hearing will be our five regular board members. So Jim, would you read the first continued hearing? Continue the hearing of 21 Wilson's Grove. Owner Cynthia T. D'Alessandro requests a written finding under Article 5, Section 174-17 of the Zoning Bylaws to construct a five point, what, uh, five point, is that five foot four inch? Uh, five, five point four. Five point four um, times eight by uh, point two five addition on rear deck structure and property located in an R3 zoning district and within the Pompanesset Overlay District. Map 118, parcel 95, Mashpee, Massachusetts. This is continued from June 8, 2016 hearing at the request of the board. Hi. Hello again. Hello. Okay. To, uh, to, can you grab the mic, that's all. To, oh, just you take it right out, right, right, right at the it top. Off the clip. Oh. If you want. Uh, okay, to, uh, to, to review, uh, adding a small little addition onto the back of the, uh, the, the Cape House. Uh, currently, right now, there's a wash and dry wash and dryer <coughs> here, a shower in here, and I basically just want to extend out five feet out and go across so that we have a, uh, the wash and dryer is accessible from inside the house. Basically, this is the. Sorry. This is the floor plan. Again, a washer, the shower and washer dryer here. Uh, and here we would have the entrance coming at the house. The washer dryer would be inside of a closet. And we'd have the, uh, a, a shower room here. And, and what was the washer dryer would just be a, a shed area. Okay. I had presented all this last time and I was missing, the only thing I believe I was missing was a signature for the conservation department. And going through Mary Ann, we do have that, that letter yep. that he has signed off on. I will read it in. It's. Uh Dated 6 17 16 from Conservation Commission. It's to myself, the Zoning Board Chairman, Jonathan Furbush, and it's from Drew McManus, Mashpee Conservation Agent, 21 Wilson's Grove. The proposed project at 21 Wilson's Grove will not require a conservation permit. Thank you, sincerely, Drew McManus. So you're all set on that, and that was the only thing that we were concerned with I believe is that correct mm -hmm. we went through everything I think else. so we were do we I think we were talking about it was going up on sauna tubes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. were any of your abutters here at last meeting no, no. Uh, yes the, currently right now the, the existing deck that's there uh, it was just on the center blocks so I have a plan was to actually dig down put sauna tubes in to, uh, to hold the new the new cable wall. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm going to be presenting uh, my uh, you know, building plans for all that. And the process of getting those drawn up to meet the 110 mile an hour wind zone code. Yeah. I think that's all we needed. Any other questions, comments from anybody on the board? Do you need to read in this letter that Drew? Well, that's all back up. It's all just back up. Yeah, anyway. okay. I didn't see enough anybody in the audience have any comments? Questions? 
Ron, would you like to make a motion? Love to. I'd like to make a motion that we issue a written finding to Cynthia T. D'Alessandro of 21 Wilson's Grove um, under Article 5, Section 174-17 of the Zoning Bylaws to construct a 5.4 by 8.25 addition on the rear deck structure and property located in the I-3 Zoning District and within the Papanesset Overlay District, Map 118, Parcel 95, Mashpee, Mass. <coughs> with the following conditions. The board has determined that the applicant meets all the conditions of a written finding under Mass General Law 48, Section 6. I make reference to two plans. One is a certified plot plan named David D. D'Alessandro, location 21 Wilson's Grove, Mass, G. Mass, scale 1 inch equals 20, dated 5-11-2016, datum VA, NAVD, 1988, deed reference C, 16170E, plan reference 11408-S and 6811-D, New England Land Survey, Professional Land Surveyor, 25 Sutton Ave, Oxford, Mass, 01540, fi phone 508-987-0025, fax 508-234-7723. <coughs> Registry, Barnstable, we certify that the buildings are located are within the special flood zone AE, elevation 13 feet, C firm 25001C0754J, zero 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 dated 07-16-2014, scale 1 inch equals 20 feet, file 21, Wilson's Grove, Mashby. Second plan, mm -hmm. a building permit plan, name David D. D'Alessandro, location 21, Wilson's Grove, Mashby, Mass. Scale one inch with 20 feet, date 5 11 2016, datum NAVD 1988, deed reference C 16170E, plan reference 11408 S and 6811-D. New England Land Surveyor, Professional Land Surveying, 25 Sutton Ave, Oxford, Mass 01540, phone 508 987 0025, fax 508 234 7723, registry, Bonstable. We certify that the buildings are within the flood, special flood zone AE elevation 13 feet, C firm 25001C0754J, dated 07 16 2014. Scale one inch equals 20 feet, file 21 Wilson's Grove, Mashby. Depicts proposed addition. 5.4 times by 8.25. I'm believing that's tenths, sir? 5.4 by 8.25, or is that? No, yeah, it's probably, it's probably tenths. Uh, okay. Yes. Also, a proposed floor plan, David D. D'Alessandro, location 21 Wilson's Grove, Mastery Mass, scale, in, scale 1 inch equals 10 feet. Date 511-16, depicting the proposed wash and dryer, existing bedroom, detail scale, one inch equals five feet. Note, all new construction will comply with the building code standards, including standards for 110 mile per hour wind zone. Also, proposed floor support plan and proposed roof plan. Also, they're all, they're all there. Okay. Yep. I, I do not know still if that's 5.4 by 8.25 is tenths inches, or the way it's depicted yeah. is a little strange. But I'm sure that's something that the um, zoning enforcement agent can deal with. Well, it wouldn't be 0.25 <laughs> inches. So. Good idea. Yeah, it's a little smaller. Yeah, it's different. So it's going to be 0.25 inches, that would be 2 feet. <sighs> okay. Is that it? Right. So, uh, I apologize. I, I, went, I tried to give you these last time, uh, but you said to bring them this time. These, these plans are identical to those, except that I added the, uh, Mary Ann told me to add the uh, Pompanessa overlay information on it, and they're identical. So, um, well, it's identical with a revision date on them then. No, there's that too, they did revision date and the, and the overlay. So, so I need to see those. Mr. Chairman, do you want these read into the, uh, their revised plans I mean, with a revision date on them? Let's get them here, right? He has them right yeah. here. It's, it's just it's three copies of each. Yes, the same stuff. Plans, You're talking about this zone. A uh, three uh, up here. This is a, yes, this right. Is a, and the date. The My only concern is a revision date on it. We want to, it's re reference needs to be into the into the um, into six, the record. Five, I would think. Yeah, this is five eleven. Yeah. Why don't we just read into the record, if I may, sure. su suggest that we just re read into the record the revi revisions of both. Do I have both plans, or are these the same? There's three copies of these. Okay, so if I can have the three, the other three copies. They're right here. Okay. 
I just need to see the revision date. So the building permit plan um, has a revision date of where is the revision? top right. Uh, data D reference plan NAVD. Where the heck is the revision date? Uh, that's a date. It's not a revision date. So did you just redate it, or did you take yeah, a plan? Ah. I wish you would have taken the 511 and just put revision next to it and put 65. Okay. It's all right. All right. Well, all right. So the date of this plan, which is the building permit plan, that's the caption of the plan, is 65 2016. It is not a revision date, it's the original date of the plan. Uh, and the date of the certified plot plan uh, is now 6 5 2016. It is not as depicted as a revision date, it is depicted as the original date of the plan. In the future, just you should strike. You should just put next to it, revise with a date. Next the other ones in back. No big deal. The originals are back. The new ones are front. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a great summer. Thank you too. Thank you. Streets to the Gonzales. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, the usually go there. Depends on the day. Today I was there at 7.30. Mm -hmm. I sometimes go there. Usually on Wednesday, but... All right. Uh, I, right. I heard that. I Is that it? Leave, you know, no more paper to sign? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm offering. There you go. Careful what you wish for. <clears throat> Jim, would you read the next continued hearing? Opening the hearing of... A reopening, the hearing. reopening the hearing of 706 Old Barnstable Road, owner Mark J. Caters and Dimitri Deitch of uh, Diamond Buildings Builders. Six reversal of the Building Commissioner's decision to prohibit a bedroom use in an accessory structure <laughs> under Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 8, and Section 15. On property, property located in an R5 zoning district, map 79, parcel 66, Mashpee, Massachusetts. This is continued from June 27, 2016, hearing at the request of the board. All right. Bill and I met, actually had a conference call with the town attorney and discussed both sides of this case for probably maybe 40 minutes. We reviewed dwelling detached on page five, the actual answer and explanation to what it was. We reviewed accessory building right on page one we also reviewed 174-25 a-1 detached dwelling which is on page 27 we reviewed 124 174-25 a12 accessory dwelling which is also on page 27 and then we talked about 174-22 which is a real key here compliance of use required which is on page 16. We also reviewed 174.46, the 
the OSID, which is on page 93. We thought possibly it might fall into there. And after 40 minutes, town council is in agreement with the building commissioner. That in fact, um, a bedroom outside of the house is not allowed. So then the interpretation is that a bedroom outside of the house without any ex uh, kitchen facilities constitutes a residential dwelling? Is that, is that the conclusion essentially that's been reached? Because yeah. it's my understanding that even when you refer to the OSID, OSID bylaw, that uses the terminology accessory dwelling. Accessory dwelling typically would have kitchen facilities. Correct. And we thought you might fall in under that. But, but you don't. OSID district, so. Yeah, first of all, you need 20 acres. Correct. Second of all, you need a special permit by the planning board. Right, but that's to create an OSID development, which is right. a subdivision. <coughs> and. I think it really comes down to 174-22, compliance of use required. In other words, if it's not listed there, it's not allowed in the table. Well, we can agree to disagree, uh, obviously. I believe, well, you know, I, I you have a very strong argument, and that's why we sought an independent I understand. I answer on that. Bill, do you have anything to add on that? No, I mean, he went through it all, and we looked... Trust me, we took your side on this and, and pushed the envelope to get a, a really fair and honest answer from him. The, the, the fin final thing that pushed it over the edge was if uh, was the, um, the wording that if it's not listed, it's not, a, it's not allowed. And um, it's not in the table, and it's not allowed. And we looked everywhere we could think of to come up with, well, was it not allowed because it wasn't thought of? Was it not allowed because they don't want it? Um, and was it not addressed because they forgot about it? And it, the only place we could find it addressed at all, and it was really tangentially because it was not what you want. What you want, you want a bedroom. That would, that would be. Stretch. This would be a that would be a big stretch. Plus, yeah, you'd like need a couple more acres too to to try and do something there. We couldn't find anything. And, um, That's what it says. Yeah. The uh, you probably know this. Well, yeah. I, I, had, I know what that I know what the bylaw says. And my, my only my position essentially was that single-family residential use was a use that was designated in the bylaw and that the use that is located on this site, uh, notwithstanding it may be in one, more than one building, is a single family residential use. So we agreed to disagree because I believe that there is a specific uh, reference to a single family residential use. I believe that this constitutes a single family residential use, but apparently town council believes that it's a single family residential use with an accessory dwelling use. So we don't agree. Mike, do you have anything you'd like to add? Or? No. I, I don't know what else to say. But well, we've all, I guess we've all said all we can say. So <laughs> I guess all we need is, uh, is a, a vote of the board. I think, I think we'll that what the argument is, is the way you interpret it is single family it's zoned for single family use. And you're, you, you're, you're relying on, even though it's in two different buildings, it's not two different dwellings because there's no, it's not a full facility. And it's, a, it's intended for single family use, the property itself. That's it in a nutshell. That, that lot. Right. And you know, if you look at the definition of accessory dwelling and what it says right on page one talks about principal use and that stuff so you can get into discussing all of that right. and dwelling detached on page five you look at the information there mm -hmm. and i'm telling you we we beat this to death I, I for 40 that. minutes 
and um, it's not very often that you have to you know go to town council unless there's a uh, basically a, a question of interpretation so to, you know if you look at um, on page five it's, it says dwelling accessory residence created under the provisions of 174 46 B1 we know what that is that's, that's the OSID but, uh, but it also talks about a detached dwelling which is it says it's a building designed for or occupied as a residence and I suggest that you can't occupy a building without a kitchen as a residence I agree well I don't know what to say why don't we vote on it anyway um, would you like to make a motion? Well, I'm happy to. <clears throat> positive. I'll pause it first and then. Of course. Yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the reversal of the building commissioner's decision, and the applicant would be is Mark J. Cadis and Dimitri Deach of Diamond Builders, uh, the location is 706 Old Barnstable Road. And the decision was in reference to the prohibition to prohibit uh, a bedroom use in an accessory zone under MGL Chapter 40A, Section 8 and 50 in a property located in R5 Zoning District, Map 79, Parcel <coughs> 66, Mastery Mass, continued from June 22, 2016 hear hearing at the request of the board. Again, this motion is to approve the reversal. Okay, do I have a second? A second. Okay, let's do one at a time. I'm voting against the reversal. No. So I'm voting no. Bill? No. I'm voting no. 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 Okay. The no's have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. For my clarity in the future, you can have an accessory building that has, doesn't long as it doesn't have a bedroom. Watch it, watch it. <laughs> I just, now that it's all, I just want to get for clarity. Yeah, accessory building, that's all it's As long as there's no bedroom. Right. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I got a shed in my yard. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I wouldn't sleep in it. It's got uh, but you could, you could finish got the inside mice and uh, lawnmowers. Correct, sir. You couldn't sleep in it now because it would be an enforcement action for violating the zoning rights. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Have a great night. Yeah, take yeah, care. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if it was giving me work or him work. I guess we can agree to disagree. That's okay. Mike's on a, Mike's on a real string here, too. Excuse me? We've upheld your decision more than once. So all those accessory buildings up on the block are the illegal ones. What's the block? Ocean block. Every one of those units has an accessory building across there. Are they in Pompanessa? Yeah. No, they're not. They're in... New Seabury. Under the special yeah, permit. Uh, that's, yeah. the that's, yeah. permit. that's how they got it. Because when you read that section as we referenced here, 17446, it's a special permit granted by the planning board. So the planning board granted Certain that. Areas, many, one, many, many years acres. ago. Because yeah. of all, acres all of the Seabury is over yeah, 20 acres. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha. they got it. They got you, got you. Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify. Was that done right? Comes up again. I know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yes. Perfect. So if they want a boathouse, that they. Uh, yeah, it's like they're more of a story. All right, Jim. Would you read? Would you read the next? There wouldn't be any more. Continued hearing. Continuing, continuing the hearing of 43 Waterline Drive South. Steve, Stephen, and Susan Roskirtian request a written finding on the. Uh, section 174-17 of the zoning bylaws to raise and replace a single-family dwelling on property located in an R3 zoning district. Map 120, parcel 148, Mashby, Massachusetts. Owner of record, 43 Waterline LLC. This is being continued until August 10th, 2016 at the request of the attorney. Okay, let me read in this letter from uh, Dunning, Corain, McNichols, and Garner. Uh, dated July 5th, it's to myself. 
Jonathan Furbush, Chairman, Mashpee Zoning Board of Appeals, 16 Great Neck Road, Mashpee, Mass, 02649. Reference 40, the 43 Waterline LLC, 43 Waterline Drive South. Dear Mr. Furbush, as you know, my office represents the above referenced applicant, the 43 Waterline LLC. It is hereby requested that the hearing set for this evening be further postponed to August 10th, 2016 to afford the Conservation Commission an opportunity to act on the request for the amended order of condition. Thank you in anticipation of your cooperation. In this regard, very truly yours, Kevin M. Corain. All right, would you like to make a motion? Sure. I'd like to make a motion that we accept um, the applicant's um, request for an extension. The applicant is, um, who's the actual name of the applicant? Um, Stephen and Susan Bus Buscar Buscarshian of 43 Waterline Drive South to extend um, their public hearing, or their hearing to August 10th, 2016. Bill, do you second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We don't sign a sheet on this. I think so. This is the closest thing. There's nothing else, right? Okay. Jim, would you read the first new hearing? New hearings, opening the hearing of Monahansett Road, 67 Monahansett Road. Owners Jean M. Gallagher and Regina L. Lawson request a written finding on the section 174-17 of the zoning bylaws to raise and replace a single family dwelling on property located in an R3 zoning district and within the Pompanisset Overlay District, map 123, parcel 97. Uh, and they're requesting continued um, until September 14th, 2016, uh, at the request of the petitioner. Okay, I'd like to read in a letter from Millbrook Modular Homes dated June 30th, 2016. It's to the town of Mashpee, members of the ZBA board, 16 Great Neck Road North, Mashpee, Mass, 02649. Uh, it's from Millbrook Modular Homes, 2255 Providence Highway, Walpole, Mass 02081. Reference 67 Monahansett Road. Dear members of the ZBA Board, we are writing to request a continuance until September 14th, pending conservation approval for the project at 67 Monahansett Road. Thank you for your consideration in this matter, please call 508-734-5884 with any questions you may have. Kind regards, looks like Carrie or Lindini, builder. All right, would you like to make a motion? Certainly, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the request of Jean M. Gallagher and Regina L. Lawson of 67 Monahan Monahansett Road uh, to extend their hearing until September 14, 2016 on a request of a written finding under 174.17 of the zoning bylaws to raise and replace a single family dwelling property located in R3 zoning district and within the Papanesset Overlay District, map 123, parcel 97, mash you mash. Do I have a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes. If I may. Um, in a situation like this, and I may be getting a little technical, but if an applicant filed for this hearing and someone other than that applicant, and I don't know if that's the case, asked for an extension, could we get into <clears throat> a situation where an approval by default 
In other words, then. If, if it goes past the 100 right. day or you get an extension letter. I see. So, so we're not in that area right now, but if in fact another extension is asked by, let's say, Millbrook, and it goes beyond that date, and Millbrook wasn't the applicant, we could then get a default situation. We wouldn't let it go beyond that date. Yeah. All right. Okay. Just trying to. We rely default. on Mary Ann to tell us that we're going okay. to approach that date and just, we have to make just a Just asking and trying to understand. <laughs> I agree. That's a good thing. Good point. Hmm. We did lose by default. We have. Hmm. That light go up? Okay. 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 Mr. Chairman, I was, in, I was reviewing the plans for this application and we found a lot of missing information. Obviously, conservation doesn't have a filing yet. And I contacted the applicant and let them know. And therefore, they said, well, we need to obviously go to conservation with the correct information and, you know, go to their board. And also, looking at their application, they may require a variance. So they'd have to refile close to the wetlands, aren't they? Yes. But it's already pre existing, I believe. The house is already there. Yeah. So <clears throat> So as long as the all the information's gonna is gonna need to be on the paperwork. Okay. Yeah. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah, and they also have to be really asking for what we've published. Mm. Okay. If they're asking for something different come here if they're asking for something different for example a variance yep. and it wasn't published they can't uh, we can't rule on that okay all right so they may have to just re refile yeah okay and get the plans updated with all the information that's supposed to be on there on there right okay. did yeah. you do that just by verbal over the phone um, or by email or I probably should email them yeah I just let them know. so you've got a little bit of a Including but not limited to is a great phrase, by the way, that I love to use. The following are deficiencies in the plan and are included but not limited to in case we as a board come up with other items. We don't want them pointing to you and saying, but she said. Okay. She said including but not limited to. We may have other things. <laughs> right. you, know, you know, I Absolutely. just yep. don't want to see Marianne in a position where, no. well, but she's, you know, that's the point that she made, these five issues. I corrected the five issues. But, but as a board, we have a right to come up with five more or other things, and it's concluding but not limited to. Sure. I'm just making a statement. Follow yeah. or don't if you choose to. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, send her an email then. Paper trail. I like it. Yes. Okay. Good things. All right. You've been a lawyer. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Would you read the first other business? Uh, a vote to reorganize the board member appointments. Okay, we need to do this every year. Uh, it's always the first meeting in July of the year because it starts the fiscal year, which ends, what, June 30th? For all you fiscal people. So here we are, and we've done this a number of times. Every year we do it. So, uh, first thing we need to do is elect a chairman, the next chairman. So, I'm looking for nominations. Do, do I have a, uh, the right to say something, make a comment? Why not? Sure. Okay. Um, In the mic. I've been have here. your mic just. <laughs> I'm sort of a old man on the totem pole, but I've been impressed by the professionalism and knowledge of uh, our present uh, offices. And uh, I, if I do have the ability to uh, make a motion, I would move that uh, the clerk cast one vote for the present offices. Okay. Well, do we, do, we, do we have any nominations? Oh, you want to go through the nominations? Let's start with the nomination. Okay. And we can have as many nominations as you want. Mm -hmm. So do we have a nomination for chairman? 
I would like to nominate Jonathan Furbush as chairman. I was going to play with it a little bit, but I can't do That's that. quite all right. That's all right. I just can't do it. It's not in me. I oh, suck. In okay, before we do that, do we have other nominations? Crickets. Oh, we got a runoff here. I'll do it. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. I second it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? <laughs> All right, so that one's down and out. All right, now we have to vote for the next vice chairman. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make a nomination for Bill. I think he's done a fabulous job. He's been here a long time. So that's my nomination. Do we have any other nominations for vice chairman? Plus, look at him. We have to feel bad for him. I mean, look at that face. <laughs> I can do the job now that I've had a lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're more qualified. <laughs> I could vote against him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I have a second then? I second. All right. How does everybody vote? Aye. 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 Abstain. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Okay. The ayes have it. Any opposed? None. All right. That one's done. All right. Now we need the clerk vote. Do we have a nomination for clerk? Ron Bonvi. I nominate him. Do we have a second nomination? Anybody else would? Dom, are you going to say something? No. Okay. <laughs> he was going to play with me. <laughs> so Don't thinking. you do it, Dom. <laughs> He's thinking. <laughs> he was going to okay. do it. I don't have anything to say. You, you can see the wheels turn. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The ayes have it. <laughs> All right. That is done. All right. So, uh, Jim, would you read the last other minutes? Approval Excuse of me, the other June business. 22nd, 2016 meeting minutes. Okay. Do we have a... That was a motion. Do we have a motion? That, that is a motion. motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, John, would you like to make a motion? <laughs> I make a motion that we adjourn. Do we have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night.